Okay, so we're going to be looking at applications other than unbanked curves and bank curves for uniform circular motion today. Okay, um, one of those applications is artificial gravity, okay, or being able to generate artificial gravity in the proper physical way which fortunately for you guys, modern science fiction does a great job of showing the practical way to generate uh, artificial gravity. If you've seen the Martian, they, um, then they have the rotating ring on the ship. Okay, That is how you would properly generate artificial gravity, unlike in like Star Trek and Star Wars, where artificial gravity is just this thing that's there and everybody sticks to the deck. And there's no explanation as to why unless the artificial gravity fails, and then everybody floats, and it's like, well, it failed. But it's just this magic artificial gravity. That's crap, okay? But we let it go, because, well, Star Wars is Star Trek or else. So, yeah. But we're going to look at how we would actually do this, but we're also going to look at where those ideas get used on Earth as well. How many people have ridden the Gravitron? Okay. It's, uh, they have one that's like it at Callaway Park, but they always have one at like Stampede. You go inside and it spins around and around and you stick to the wall. Yeah. Okay, that's the Gravitron. It's basically just a big centrifuge. Okay. But that is the prince that ride is the principle behind the generation of artificial gravity. Okay? So if you've seen the Martian and you know that rotating ring is going around and around like this, that's a Gravitron. You stick to the inside of it, to the floor. Okay, because your inertia wants you to leave the circle. But the circle pushes back on your feet back towards the center. And so you feel like you have weight. You don't. Okay? It's fake. Artificial gravity. It's not real gravity. Okay? And it would change depending on where you were in the ring. So if you're on the very outside of the ring, you'll feel really, really heavy. But as you move closer to the center of the ring, you'll get lighter and lighter and lighter until you're at the center where you would be weightless. Yeah. Okay. So the, the Gravitron, the ride, works the same way. It spins and it spins really, really fast and it gets going fast enough that your inertia, your desire to leave the circle, tangent to the circle, okay, is creating a pushing force against the inside of the ride. The ride, according to Newton's third law, pushes back towards the center Okay? And you feel like you're pinned to the wall. Right? Um, now, usually you're you're belted in, usually, right? There's the one that's enclosed. No, there's one that's enclosed. And then the, yeah. the wall slides up. Like when right, you lay yeah. on it, it like slides up. Slides up and you just, yeah. So, anyway, I've got a couple videos of this one guy who, like, well, the, di the title of the video is Riding Like a Pro. Okay? <laughs> and he's, like, standing <laughs> on the rails like this okay? <laughs> while it's spinning around. Because he, well, we pay him. They have like buckles for when you ride it? I think to start anyway they do. In the, in the open ones. I've, in the, the open ones, yeah. The I open ones they have to because you can fly up. Oh, I've oh. never seen one with If it's enclosed, then, then, then you just get pinned to the wall. Okay, so I've got a couple of these here. So how to ride the Gravitron like a pro. <laughs> terms of artificial gravity, why do we want to be able to generate artificial gravity? Like, why wouldn't we just hang out in cool zero gravity? It's like, since they're traveling in the Martian from one planet to another, they need to be able to adapt to a planet quicker. Yeah. And it's really hard on the human body to be in zero gravity. Yeah, like there are a lot of very negative health effects to being in zero gravity. Okay. Chris Hetfield, who was our Canadian astronaut, who was the commander of the International Space Station, um, his research is all around long-term effects of weightlessness on astronauts. Um, so a number of things don't work in your body properly when you're not in a gravity environment. Right? One of the first things is your balance. What do we use, what organ in our body helps us stay balanced? Your ears. 
Okay? Inside the middle ear or the inner ear, they are those semicircular canals. They're right by the, the cochlea. Okay? And they tell us how we're oriented. So if I tilt and lean one direction, okay, there's little nerve endings in there that detect that I'm not straight up and down. And that automatically communicates to my brain that I should tense up my core on the other side so that I don't fall over or I should redistribute my weight to keep my balance. Okay? It's all done autonomically. I don't even have to think about it. The problem is, is that if I go into zero gravity, that doesn't work anymore because it's dependent on gravity to tell me which way I'm oriented. So once gravity is gone, my inner ear balance center becomes like a car alarm that won't shut off. It screams at the brain constantly. And it's like, we're upside down, we're right side up. We're falling, we're turning, we're leaning, we're going to fall, we're upside down, you're going to be sick now. Like, it's just going to constantly scream at the brain, giving it these messages that really aren't valid, but are also sort of true. You're upside down. How do I know? I don't know, but there's no gravity, so I can't tell which way is up and down, so you must be upside down. And that's why, for the first few days, astronauts are often quite nauseous. And they're just like stick to their stomach because their brain is still listening to their inner ear for cues about their orientation. Right? Eventually, the brain does what we would do, which is like, ah, the thing is going off again. Just going to ignore it. Okay? And they just finally just tell the middle ear, look, shut up, dude. Okay? I just can't take it anymore. I'm not listening to you anymore. Talk to the hand. Okay? I'm not. And then the, the brain will switch to the eyes for balance which in zero gravity is just fine. I look there and I go, okay, I'm looking at a computer screen and I can read it, so it's right side up, so so am I. I'm good, okay? Or, oh, I'm, I'm sideways, but that's okay because it's not really zero gravity and I can tell where I am, and your brain just gets used to using your eyes for balance. Fine in zero gravity, okay? But as Cash was saying, if I'm going from Earth to Mars, when I get to Mars and my brain has gotten used to using my eyes for balance, I'm gonna be in trouble. Because when I you know, get chosen to be the first person to step onto Mars, I'm like the Neil Armstrong of Mars now. I'm going to have something important to say and leave these cool footprints in the sand and whatever. Okay? So I get to the edge, and I'm about to step down. And I look down, I'm going to fall. Because my brain is listening to my eyes. And when my eyes look down like this, my brain goes, oh, crap, we're falling. And it'll do whatever it can to stop that. But we're not falling. There's gravity holding us there. And so your body will do something weird, tense up, and you'll fall down the stairs and leave the first faceplate imprint okay, on, on Mars and possibly have an explosive decompression situation. Okay? That would not be a very glorious way okay, to uh, you know, put the first person on Mars. So we want to have a, we want to have artificial gravity on the way there. Plus, all your muscles atrophy. Okay. The astronauts on the International Space Station have to work out several hours a day. Yeah, they have like these like big, um, big like there's a platform that you stand on for like something things like uh, I got a bench video. pressing. Yeah, yeah, they have like um, almost like elastic bands that hook up to their suit. Yep. So then they stay on the platform riding some sort of like gravitational force. And then there's like um, like biometric, like almost like uh, it's like low pumps. Yeah, it almost is like an exosuit that like helps you with the exactly. So without gravity, it's hard to do cardio, right? Like, what do you do for cardio? Elliptical trainer, treadmill, stationary bike. In zero gravity, all of those don't work because as soon as you push on them, you fly off because of Newton's first law or Newton's third law. So it doesn't work. So they have a treadmill. But they also have this life preserver slash vest thing that they wear that's bungee corded to the treadmill. So you can run on the treadmill, but the bungee cords are always pulling you onto it. So you can do some cardio, you can actually run. Okay? And then they've got this other machine that's basically like a Bowflex, okay? that's just resistance training. Because taking weights into space is not only very expensive, but totally useless. Okay? I could look really huge in space for about one and a half seconds. Okay? I put the bench there, I start slapping weights, plates on each side of the bar, okay? and then I go and I lift the bar off the thing and put it on my chest, and I'm like, eh, gotta do this. 
That's the end of me looking cool. Because now, off I go, because that bar weighs way more than me, and it's got movement now, and it's going to take me with it. Okay, off we go, okay, because there's no way to stop. Okay, so weights don't work in space. You're not going to get anything out of actual, like, gravity-based weights. You have to have resistance instead, because it's not relying on gravity. Right? So there's a lot of other issues as well. If you're in zero gravity, you're not working out, you're not doing things, then your bones and muscles break down. Your body recycles things. Okay? So the muscles begin to break down, the bones begin to break down, because when we're on Earth, even just breathing works our muscles around our lungs. Okay? Walking around causes small micro fractures in our bones that heal and get stronger and make our bones more dense. They, like the first thing they tell elderly people when they're starting to get osteoporosis, that's the weak bones, they is you need to do more load-bearing exercise. Go for walks, lift some light weights, all of those cause micro fractures that heal up and get stronger. They, in space, you don't have that. Okay? So your bones really start to get weak. Okay? In fact, when Chris Hedfield came back, his bone density was lower than a 65-year-old man. Okay? And he had been working out, taking, having proper diet, all that kind of stuff. It's just a lack of gravity. Okay? They really found this out when the Soviet Union crumbled because some astronauts were left on the Mir space station, which is no longer there. But, um, that was Russia's space station, the Soviet Union space station at the time. When the Soviet Union crumbled, they had no way to go up to space to get these people. So they were stuck there. And of course, the US is like, we'll go get them. Look at all your stuff. But we'll go get them. And Russia's like, uh, no. Not yet. Not going. And they're not going to let you do that. You cannot go to our space station. That's Russian soil. OK? Um, so these guys were left up there. They did say, you can send them food and water. We'll let you do that. But it has to be automated. Like, it's unmanned. Send it up. So these guys are stuck on Mir with no way to their muscles and bones strong for 13 months or something. It was, it was a long time. And when they came back, they like had to be ventilated, intubated, because their muscles that do the breathing had gotten so weak that in a gravity environment, they couldn't lift their rib cage to ventilate their lungs. Okay? That's how weak they had gotten. Okay? Um, so being in zero gravity for a very long time is very, very bad for you. And when your muscles and bones start to break down, you get more calcium building up in your blood. And then your kidneys try and filter that out. And all that extra calcium can cause kidney stones, which on Earth are painful, can sometimes cause like a urinary tract infection or something like that. But like, imagine trying to pee out a small, sharp, jagged rock, okay? Like, not fun. Now, imagine you're in space and you're couple of million miles from the nearest hospital and you get a kidney stone and a urinary tract infection, that could be deadly. I mean, obviously you carry antibiotics on board and things like that, but small health problems can be life-threatening on a spacecraft that's a long way from Earth that would be, you know, something simple to fix here. So all of these are issues with, with being in zero gravity for long periods of time. So your weight-bearing muscles and bones deteriorate. You get loss of blood plasma, obviously higher radiation risk. Okay? Fluid re redistribution causes head congestion and a puffy face. I'm going to show you some videos of Chris Hetfield on the International Space Station. And you can see it and you can hear it. When he speaks, he sounds like he has a cold in all of the videos. Okay? And it's because without gravity, the fluid that would normally be down in our legs and feet redistributes equally. Okay. The first few days that astronauts are in space, they actually look like they've gone a few rounds with like a heavyweight boxer. They're literally swollen okay, in their face and in their hands. They actually feel a bit arthritic because that fluid isn't where it normally is. Okay. Um, you can have disorientation. Okay. Eyes become the main way to sense motion. Um, kidney filtration, okay, all of that kind of stuff. You get a little bit taller. Okay, in zero gravity, because gravity is not compressing your vertebrae and your joints and everything. Okay, so you grow a little bit, about three inches taller. <laughs> yeah, but it's only, it doesn't do any good because you're floating all the time. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so zero gravity, as much fun as it would be short term, it's really not good for you. And that's why for a long term 
space voyage, there's got to be some replacement for gravity or some artificial gravity being generated. Okay, so let's have a look here. Some of the weird things that zero gravity situations also affect. Can you use a sink? No, no. Okay. What about the toilet? No. Yeah, you'd be surprised how much gravity is really important when you go to the bathroom. Okay. Zero gravity doesn't fall away from you. Okay. So the space john, it works a little differently. Okay. Um, there's actually like a, um, a suction to make sure okay, everybody has their own hose. Okay. And to do number two, um, they actually um, open a small vent so that there's like some vacuum and it makes sure that anything that comes out of you gets pulled away from you because you know you don't want that floating out. <laughs> it's not only disgusting, but it's also a health hazard. Okay? Um, and yeah, I don't want somebody else's log floating by in the cabin. Like, that's just disgusting. That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, so they have this thing that it basically pulls all the human waste away. Then there's a reverse osmosis unit that actually filters the urine. Okay, because they can't be bringing up water all the time. They can't just go, oh, well, you feed that out, so we got to get rid of it. No, they got to recycle that, so you drink your own urine, filtered obviously, okay, on the International Space Station. And every once in a while, they launch off a waste capsule and make a poop comet. Okay, I remember seeing an interview with Chris Hemphill. It's like, the next time you look up and you see a shooting star, remember that it could be the poop capsule. They just jettison that stuff. So I was just wondering, do you know whose idea was to go to space? Because like, well, why would anyone want to people's ideas? Yeah. yeah. No, no, it just doesn't make sense. Like, see how high you can shoot yourself into the air. So the captain. Why climb a mountain? Because it's there. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. That, that's the human condition, right? We just want to do stuff, accomplish things, yeah. get to the moon faster than somebody else. Yeah. All right. So, so lots of issues that have to be sort of considered if you're not going to have artificial gravity. Having artificial gravity is kind of the simple solution to all of those problems. It isn't as simple as it looks always. Like, sure, in the Martian, they just have part of the ship that's spun around. But there's a conservation of angular momentum that also comes into play when you've got one part of the ship that's spinning and the ship is trying to go a different direction. Okay? Some of that rotation wants to try and pull the ship around a little bit. So there has to be those kind of considerations as well. OK, so if we want to generate artificial gravity, this is what we do. We have a spinning ring or a drum okay, or a cylinder of some kind that's going to rotate on an axis. The habitation part where we would stand okay, is right here. So we would stand on the interior floor of the drum. Since that drum is rotating this direction, our inertia wants us to go like this. But because we're standing on the floor, Okay? The floor prevents us from moving that way. We exert a force on it because of our inertia, and it exerts a force back. But it can only exert a force perpendicular to the floor. And that would be directed where? Towards the center. Towards the center. So it feels just like gravity feels. When you stand up and you're, you can feel the floor pushing on your feet, it would feel exactly the same there. Okay? So as long as you're on the floor, everything's going to feel like it normally does. What if you jump? When the, when the bottom well, when you jump, you're moving the same speed as the floor. Oh, so it's like it's still still same as Yeah, so you would still have that momentum, but the problem is, is that now you're going to, yeah, you could literally go, oh, my buddy's over there, and just jump right across. Okay, I mean, it's not going to work perfectly like that because you're going to arc because you have that momentum or that inertia that was circular, okay? and so when you jump, it's not going to be perfect. Okay? But if you're climbing into the center, you get lighter and lighter and lighter because your radius is getting smaller, smaller and smaller. So then, like, would the outside spin, or would you be in it like, while it's spinning? You're in it. It's spinning, and you're inside it. Oh, and you're just like, watching it. So like, when you get through it? No, because you're not going to notice that. When you're inside, standing on it while it's spinning, you're spinning with it. So it's like if you're on a train. 
and you walk on a train, yeah. right? Like you don't really notice that the train's moving unless you look outside mm -hmm. and notice, oh crap, everything else is moving. Then you get that, that idea that if I walk the opposite way, I walk really fast, right? Yeah. And, and, but you would, you'd only have that if you were looking outside and could actually see like the star field uh, moving. And that could create some issues with like, ooh, suddenly I feel sick because now I've got this different reference. But for the most part, you're not gonna notice it because you're doing the same thing it is. Um, if you were to crawl to the middle, they were, you wouldn't be moving, then you would actually, you'd be able to see that whole thing spinning around and around. Okay, that sort of makes sense to everybody? So the idea is, uh, you know, it's, it's been around for a long time, this idea of generating artificial gravity, okay? But it didn't get used a lot in science fiction movies um, other than 2001 A Space Odyssey. Has anyone seen that movie? It's, it's older than me, so it's like dirt, really old. Okay, um, but I actually have a couple of clips from that because back when it was filmed, they did some of the filming in the same way that Apollo 13 was filmed, and that is they filmed some of the scenes in NASA's zero gravity trainer. Okay, so they actually had simulated zero gravity for some of the shots because back in 1960 or 70, whatever, when 2001 came out, um, there was no CG. There was no way to have those computer generated effects that we take for granted today. Everything had to be done practically. Okay? And the best way to do that was to actually put them in the zero gravity trainer, which NASA calls the vomit comet. Okay? It's a 747 that does this. It's just oh, it's a jet. It's a jet. Yeah, and because they fly over the top. It yeah. just as it goes down, you start to feel like you have over zero the top. gravity. Yeah. And I'm going to show you that later. Two things. One yeah. thing on the bathroom. Yeah. I really buy motion sickness, so would I like to be terrible in space? Probably, yeah. Yeah, people that are, that's one of the first things that washes people out. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so for 2001 here. Yeah. 